Anno Novo. I've been practicing it all morning. So thank you to those who are my teachers this morning. So Happy New Year. Feliz Año Nuevo. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. And so as I prayed with the ministers before we left the back today, I uh, prayed for our world. I asked God to, to re Jesus to reach out his healing hand and heal our world. I had just got an email from friends, Lebanese friends. And of course, as you know, Lebanon is in a very difficult state, but that's only one part of the world where there are difficulties. And so we pray for our families and for those who are suffering, those who are in war. We place it all in the hands of Jesus through the intercession of Mary, the mother of God, whom we honor today. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came among us to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you intercede for us now at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins. Bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Today's response. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be gracious to us and bless us. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Long ago, God spoke to the, our ancestors by the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is that, Tony? It's something I'm doing. Of course, 
immediately you look around and assume it's somebody else's problem, right? There's <laughs> something human nature. I won't even go near it. Um, we have to recall that in ancient times people didn't have iPads and computers and so on and so writing was something very difficult and it was usually if there was writing usually everything was told in oral form in other words passed on by word of mouth, the stories. And so when it was written down as the Gospels eventually were, then they didn't waste time on words because sometimes it was uh, you know, written out with a quill or it was maybe hammered into stone or something like that. And so when we read a passage like this, we realize that they crammed all kinds of stuff into this. So there are a couple of words that are really carry a lot of meaning in this particular reading. And the one is Mary treasured these things in her heart. And then that other word pondered, pondered. Now in the ancient language, uh, in which this was written, the word pondered means to hold two things in tension without giving in to either side. Hmm? Pondering. And so as Pope Francis would say and others would say down through the centuries, pondering is really important in our church today because we can tend to have some really different uh, opinions, let us say. Those who are for Vatican II, those who are against Vatican II, those who are this, those who are that, those who want Latin, those who want the vernacular, and so on. And not to give in to either side, but rather to hold these intentions, and we need to ponder as Mary pondered. And so, the obvious one here is Mary, a virgin, and a mother. Nothing could be more contradictory than that, so to speak. And so Mary pondered this. How can this be, she says to the angel. And it, uh, Pope Francis in particular would say that that is not simply something that the church needs to know how to do to simply stand there and not have all the answers. Have things on either side and hold them in tension. And so the church needs that, but it, what Francis says is, that's something the church can model for the rest of the world, for the rest of the world. Clearly, as we look out through the world, all kinds of tensions there in the world, all kinds of different opinions. Sometimes it causes fights, sometimes it causes wars. It causes tensions that are not produ productive in our world. And so when Pope Francis asks us to ponder, to simply stand there, to sit there, in our church today and not want to rush on to a solution immediately, but to treasure them as Mary did. And so when we do that, we model, we model for nations of the world how it is that different ethnic groups different nations, peoples of different background, can learn from the church as to how to do that. We don't always have to come up with the answer right away. Mary didn't. Mary simply pondered. 
So that's an important lesson for today. Now, there's something bringing us up to date. Somebody called Austin Ivory uh, from the UK. He has co-authored with Pope Francis a book called Dare to Dream, Dare to Dream. And Austin Ivory says the point of holding what he calls polarities, in other words, things on either end, the point of holding polarities in tension is to seek their resolution on a higher plane by allowing the Holy Spirit to create a new way of seeing that reconciles opposites by transcending them. Now that may be a whole mouthful, but what it's really saying is that we have to trust and to believe, as Mary did, that the Spirit of God was working within her. Wasn't sure how this could ever be, virgin and mother, but allowing the Spirit of God, allowing the Spirit of God to work it out. We don't have to come up with the immediate answer, the Holy Spirit has been promised to us. Jesus has promised to be with us all days to the end of time. And so we hold these things in tension. And so Austin Ivory, who co-authored this book, Dare to Dream with Pope Francis, the point of holding polarities, he says, in other words, different poles, intention is to seek their resolution on a higher plane by allowing the Holy Spirit to create a new way of seeing that reconciles opposition by transcending it. Somehow the Spirit raising us above it and coming up with new solutions that we had not in our own opinionated minds or in souls even thought of. Something that is good for everybody. Um, I mentioned that there, this particular passage, as in so many in Scripture, just chucked full of all kinds of meanings, and so I, I would just touch on a couple of those. Uh, the one is that they found the child, and we read this at Christmas too, lying where? In a manger. You notice Scripture doesn't say anything about a little house or anything, and I... I all churches have them, so I know we have one here at Our Lady of Fatima. But Scripture doesn't say that. All it says is that there was a manger. It doesn't say anything about a building or anything else, a shed or anything. It's because this word manger has, has meaning. A manger is a place of nourishment, isn't it? Um, I, I intended to learn before what the word is to eat in Portuguese. In French, it's exactly the same word, manger, and, and so manger. It's spelled exactly the same, to eat, manger, manger. And so Jesus was in the manger, in the manger, in the place of worship, of nourishment, the place where we go to be fed, to be nourished. And so communion especially, we will come to be nourished. We will come to the manger to, to be nourished, to feed with the body of Jesus. The rest of those important things we'll figure out at another time. And so we rise now to pray. Gracious God, we stand before you on behalf of the world today on this first day of the year 2022. And we ask you to hear these our prayers. For the church, that we may be like Mary, treasuring God's words and deeds and drawing wisdom from them for our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for God's blessing on the new year, that the gifts of the Spirit within us are renewed and inspire us to find new ways to serve others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may promote, defend, respect for life in all people, especially the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ability to listen better, we may that we, like the shepherd, truly listen to the words spoken to us, find meaning in them, and act wisely upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish community of Our Lady of Fatima, that inspired by Mary's faith and holy life, we may be positive signs of hope to others, be a place of welcome and solace to those who are searching. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Susan Saunders, Tim Rigby, Dale Calkins, and for all others who are sick today, we pray to the Lord. For the recently deceased, especially Brian Robichaud, and for all who have died or their anniversaries are this time of year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to hear our prayers, hear the prayers of all of your people as they turn to you on this day. We ask this through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as the altar table is now prepared for our celebration of Eucharist. Pray that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginning of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God. And by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the Blessed seraphim, worship together with exultation 
May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise we acclaim. Holy. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of God's people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety and distress as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And in some sort of fashion, let us offer each other a sign of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I extend from Our Lady of Fatima community, Christian community, and from this liturgy on New Year's Day, our peace to all of those who join us live stream, either now or later on watching. We offer you the peace of Jesus from this altar and from this holy place. Lamb of God.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, his eternal life to all of us who receive it. My sisters and brothers in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us rise and pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Special blessing for this uh, beginning of the new year. And we simply respond amen at the end of each of the petitions. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray now for God's blessing upon you this day and upon this world. May God, the source and origin of all blessings, grant you grace pour out his blessings in abundance and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. Amen. May he give you integrity and in faith, endurance in hope, perseverance in charity, and holy patience to the end. Amen. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you.